Hi everyone, in this video segment we're going to be discussing adjusting patients with cervical fusions. When I went to school, I graduated in December of 2002 from LACC, and our instructors had done a really good job at instilling in us kind of a, a fear and concern about injuring patients as they should. But a part of that was a little excessive to the point that I would have never occurred to me to adjust patients with cervical fusions. When I was with my post after doctor, Dr. Michael Allen in Lake Forest, California, I was walking into his room while he was adjusting a patient whom I knew had a cervical fusion. And he adjusted her and I, I was a little startled and jumped back. And he looked at me and he says, Mark, you're not going to break that. And that one single experience changed my entire reality about what was possible with cervical fusion. In the video we're about to watch right now, we're going to take our patient, Woody. Woody's a patient of mine. This is actually the second visit we're about to view. Woody has a cervical fusion, and no chiropractor he had ever seen was interested in adjusting him because of the fears of somehow breaking the equipment or injuring the patient, which is understandable. So let's watch this first video together of his adjustment of a cervical spine. And after we come back, we're going to see what Dr. Google has to say about adjusting patients with cervical fusion. This is our patient Woody. Woody came to me about a week ago. Woody has had a neck surgery. Yeah, six vertebrae, two titanium rods, and the surgery was wonderful in the sense no more numbness, no more pain, but now the mid thoracic has to take up all the slack. And so um, trimming trees and climbing on a two story roof, I'm starting to feel it. I gave him his first adjustment in 45 years on his atlas, and this happened from a car accident in 1972. Yes. Which was a year after I was born. How about that? On your back. When I feel good, you know, I can do no wrong, and when I feel lousy, it's like I'm a baby in tears. <laughs> and now I'll start from the top. You ready? Legs straight. You push up. Go. Good. Push up. How's your neck? Just, oh, perfect. Absolutely the best. No more anything. It's just, just great. Wonderful. Those are all good. Push that way. Good. Switch sides. Good. Arms straight. You push towards my nose. Good. You push towards the cameras. Not so good. Let's double check. Try again. Push short the cameras. Okay, so we have a right pec weakness, a right glute med. What's bugging you? Anything specific? The, the right hip. It's a tiny bit sore, um, but it's not painful. It's just sore. And on a scale of one to ten, it's a two. It's the mid thoracic where I'm feeling the pain. Push up. Yeah, there's just no strength. Try that again. You ready? From yeah. the top. Go. Push up. Good. Push up. Push out. Try this one. Go. Okay, so what are you starting to fatigue with time? So he initially tested well on this right. The more testing we do, he's showing a fatigue issue. So, oh, what did you? Fatigue, mm -hmm. where your muscles are starting to burn out, mm -hmm. which is all right sided. So, we're going to just over test the left side for a little bit. Okay. Push up. Good. We're just going to keep doing this test. We're looking to see if the left side fatigues. It doesn't appear to. Under your right side. Yeah, it just doesn't have any... It's no oomph. No oomph at all. So, probably a little T&D for my Cairo junkies. A little who? T&D. Which is? It's called the transrenal DJ. You push that way. Okay. Don't let me pull, Woody. All right, so they're all right-sided weaknesses. Don't let me push. Okay. We're going to do right cerebellar and right C1 adjustment on Woody today, and he should feel much better after today's treatment. Well, no, I, I like understanding what's going on with my metabolism. Yeah. 
Well, it's a brain issue. So what's happening is your right side is not making enough energy, adenosine triphosphate, mm -hmm. to keep the muscles working. Mm. So initially it threw me off because your right quad tested well and this right, when I stroked your foot, mm -hmm. those tested well. Your glute tested weak and your pec tested weak. But then when we came back and rechecked this test, it was weak, and that threw me off for a moment. And then when we rechecked your quad, it went weak. So that told me you had a fatigue issue, where you had enough energy to pass the test a few times, mm -hmm. but with repetitive testing, you didn't. <clears throat> so we're gonna pause. The reason for the pause is, I want your nervous system to incorporate that treatment we just did. Okay. And just let you to kind of rest in that. What do you push up? Leg straight. Go. Good. Again. Go. Again. Good. Again. Good. We're going to do this one again. Push up. Good. Again. Good. Again. It's like it's still. It's back up. Yeah. yeah. out for me. Much better. Yes. Woody pushed that way. Good. Much better. I got your head. So Woody once again has a fusion from C3 to T1 I recall. Yes. For those of you who are ever going to adjust the patient with a fusion, you should never do a rotational adjustment. I'd like to publicly thank Dr. Michael Allen for teaching me how to adjust patients with cervical fusion. Doc, thank you. Well, that's the second time in 45 years, huh? Yes, absolutely. Probably gonna be a little sore in this leg for our exercises today. A small price to pay. And it's starting to go a little bit. Go. Okay, but better, right? Yes, yeah, much better. Buddy, I'm gonna go get you to walk for a little bit and we're gonna see how you're doing. Oh. <sighs> yes, much better. How are you? Good, thanks. Hi, how are you? It's amazing how you can, you know, adjust the Atlas and C1, and all of a sudden the back is better. Wendy, thanks for trusting us in our office. Appreciate it, sir. I am so glad I met you. I'm glad you came in and trusted us. Thank you. Yes, I'm feeling so much better. Thank you. We have a totally different technique, but it's like, yes. So you can see that you can adjust patients with cervical fusions. It's not an impossibility. But Woody's never experienced any type of issues other than relief from the adjustment. So that's really great to hear. You should be highly cautious of doing this type of adjustment with patients who have some type of osteoporosis or osteopenia because now you're talking about where the screws themselves might be losing their foundation in the cervical spine. Now obviously I'm not adjusting lumbar spines with fusions. Those fusions usually go down into the sacral area and so you're not getting any movement there. Here's a small little clip of a second patient. This second patient is Andrea. Andrea has a cervical fusion from C3 to C5. And I examined Andrea. But what we see with Andrea is here, here I adjusted her occiput on her C1. And so she has a positive response. Previously to this, in a visit that was not videotaped, I adjusted Andrea's C1 and her C7. So Andrea can handle that adjustment. And once again, no chiropractor was interested in adjusting her cervical spine. But in healthy patients where you know the equipment is stable and that it's been fused and it's passed some experts say between three months after the surgery, some people say as long as a year, 
Whatever the time is, she had surgery several years ago. So let's go search the internet and see what Dr. Google has to say about chiropractic care and cervical fusion. So if we take some of these and open them up, let's see what people have to say. Google, what's it say? Okay. When performed by licensed chiropractic physicians, chiropractic care can be incredibly beneficial in reducing different types of back, neck, or joint pain. If you're considering chiropractic care after an intervention, pain treatment, or minimally invasive spine surgery, take note of the following points. We'll go read that. Three things to know about neck motion after ACDF. I don't know what that is. Hmm. All right. To Dr. Google has to say. So let's read this article, Chiropractic Treatment of Post-Surgical Neck Syndrome with Mechanical Force, Manually Assisted Short Lever Spinal Adjustments. So the objective to describe a case of post-surgical neck pain after multiple spinal surgeries, ouch, it was successfully treated by chiropractic intervention with instrumental adjustment of the cervical spine. Clinical features, a 35-year-old woman had chronic neck pain for over five years after two separate surgeries of the cervical spine a disectomy at C3, C4, and a fusion at C5, C6. Surgeries were performed six months apart and attempt to resolve persistent neck pain and spasm of the cervical musculature. Neither surgery was effective in relieving the patient's pain. Five years after the second surgery, a third surgery was recommended by the patient's physicians to alleviate the chronic pain. The patient sought chiropractic evaluation of her condition to avoid further surgical intervention. Intervention and outcome. The patient was treated with conservative instrumental chiropractic manipulation consisting of mechanical force, manually assisted short lever spinal adjustments rendered with an activator adjusting instrument. Manually assisted short lever spinal adjustments. Okay. She comfortably tolerated the treatment and responded favorably to this therapy. All chronic symptoms had resolved within 30 days of instituting the chiropractic instrumental adjustments with an AAI. More interestingly, longitudinal examination over the next two years showed that the patient experienced no residual effects <clears throat> or further recurrences of her previous chronic problem after her initial course of chiropractic care. That's wonderful. Conclusion, chiropractic treatment of post-surgical neck syndrome may be effectively treated in certain cases by mechanical force, manually assisted adjusting procedures with an activator adjusting instrument. The use of instrumental adjustment methodology may provide chiropractic physicians with an effective alternative to manual manipulation in those cases in which the patient's surgical history present symptoms make forceful manipulation of the spine, particularly performed at NRAGE, inappropriate. This approach may be contemplated by physicians faced with managing this type of condition. So this is a great case study. Great case study to show how activator instrument adjusting helps with patients in their neck problems. So if we look at some images here of cervical spines that have been fused, I mean, look at this image. And here we see, here's an image just taken from the internet. And just notice how we have this fusion, but we still have segments that aren't fused. C1, C2, C3. Now obviously C4 has a fusion in it, but with that kind of upper cervical area that can still take stimulation, whether it's massage or trigger point therapy or instrument adjusting or manual adjusting, this person could still benefit from chiropractic care. This image is a, another patient, and we can see that they have their lower cervical spine fused, but obviously we still have C1, C2, C3, C4 that have movement to them and have the ability to get adjusted. So here, obviously, we wouldn't be adjusting their lower cervical spine. It looks like it goes into C7. Um, into three, four. Um, it's, it's like it goes into C5, C6. So this individual can still benefit from massage therapy, um, active range of motion, motion palpation, massage, and any type of instrument adjusting, still safe. So this patient, we have fusion at 4, 5, and 6, but still 7 can be adjusted. C7 still has the capacity to move, as does C1, 2, and 3. So actually, in a patient like this, the, most of the trauma is going to be taken up by that C3, C4, and C6, C7 disc. So patients still getting motion in there, 
and still have benefit from chiropractic care. This patient, once again, can still benefit from chiropractic care. This obviously is our traditional look of what fusion looks like. Now this patient, uh, well, I would still adjust this patient. In fact, this looks like a lot like Woody and his cervical fusion. So you can see all the heavy hardware in there. You can see how strong and stable it is. Chances are if this person doesn't have, once again, some type of degenerative condition in their spine or osteoporosis or osteopenia, and those screws hold properly, this patient could, should still be able to handle Mild chiropractic care. Don't remember December. Okay, well, here's a different one. Chiropractic management post operative spinal. A report of three cases. Purpose of this case series is to describe chiropractic care, including spinal manipulation for three patients with post surgical spine pain. Conclusion In these three cases, patients with post surgical spine pain responded positively to chiropractic care. Spinal manipulation mobilization was tolerated without significant adverse effects. Yeah, so that makes sense. This is a spine and pain center. I don't know anything about that, nor am I interested. No, I'm not interested. So here's another article talking about spinal fusion. Risk of chiropractic manipulation, of course. The Mayo Clinic contends that chiropractic manipulation is generally safe when performed by a licensed professional. However, they also warn that chiropractic manipulations have serious risk, including damage to spinal nerves and brain stem strokes. Fusion patients could be at greater risk for injury, especially if the graft is not strong enough or if the chiropractor is not familiar with non-rotational methods for spinal manipulation. Okay, so that's a great uh, segue from what we just talked about, coupled motion, coupled adjustments. Individuals who have spinal fusion surgery should avoid going to a chiropractor within the first year post-surgery. After the first year, you should consult with your surgeon. Oh, yeah, I'm sure they're going to recommend chiropractic. Okay, there's another center. Oh, not interested. This is a great example in this little segment here. I mean, the fact that this is fused doesn't mean... And this joint is obviously not moving. This joint still needs to move, and this joint still needs to move. And once again, if we're not doing rotational adjustments, this is a great way to actually help patients with neck problems. Back surgery, I don't really do adjustments on low backs after surgery. It doesn't make sense to me, but that's my personal opinion. Okay, so let's go to our second most popular. Did you know you've probably been... No, I didn't. Uh, let's see. We're going to do chiropractic care. All right. So let's go see what's up. This... Hi, this is your Houston chiropractor, Dr. Gregory Johnson, and we have Vanessa in here with us this afternoon from San Antonio, Texas. And Vanessa had spine surgery so she is our most recent episode of hardcore chiropractic so i'm going to show you something here that makes this hardcore chiropractic she had a fusion of l4 l5 in the sacrum with instrumentation as you can see i'm talking about screws and bolts and nuts and plates that's called instrumentation. That's a side view. This is a front view. We don't have view boxes here. We use a computer mostly now on digital. But you can see that she is at what's called a 360 fusion at L4, L5, which actually goes down into the facets of the L5, S1 joint. And she's got a tremendous amount of scar tissue formation around her incision site down in the lumbar spine, not only down at L4, L5, but up much higher and on, proliferates out into your surrounding tissues. How long have you been in pain now? Uh, three years. And you had your surgery how many years ago? Uh, Fifteen months. Fifteen months ago. Yes. And you said you got some immediate nerve relief that pinched and then your leg went away. Yes. But then that pain started coming back and has now been progressively getting worse, right? Yes. yes. 
All right, so this is really great. He adjusted her. I'm sure it's beneficial. It'd be interesting to see what her outcomes were on that low back later on. The bottom line is it is possible to adjust patients with spinal fusions. You're not going to break the hardware. That's the key. Can help other people stop hurting or become better with their bodies, or whatever it may be for them. Everybody's different. That, to me, would be a huge gift to the world. Hmm. is to be able to have something bad that happened to me be something positive for somebody else. Um, T5 through T T8. So her actual uh, rods and screws start at T9, go all the way down to S1, but they actually injected epoxy because she had uh, periosteoporosis, um, meaning that they were worried that those vertebra... So this is good video demonstrating what's possible with chiropractic, but we're going to move on. Let's watch this video. So how would chiropractic be able to help with that? Most people say that as soon as you've had spine surgery, then you can never adjust it again. The opposite is true. Once you've had that spine fused, and there are very few signals traveling to the brain anymore in terms of proprioception being generated from the receptors in the spine, it's more important than ever that you adjust that spine. You can adjust, you can trigger receptors, you can get messages to the brain many, many ways except with an osseous full force adjustment. You don't have to twist and pop someone to make an adjustment. So if you use instruments, if you use an arthrostim or an activator, then you can still adjust and you can put pressure on muscles and joints and tendons and you can activate those signal pathways even if there is no motion in the joint itself. So there's a huge misunderstanding about what an adjustment is and when it's appropriate to do an adjustment. It's not about the bone, it's about the brain. So when you've had a fusion it's more important than ever to get adjusted but make sure that the person knows how to do a low force instrument adjustment and that they know what they're talking about. So let's do one last video of Woody and then let's close out this section. And once again, this is a great example of how patients with cervical fusions can appropriately handle chiropractic care. What I'm do with Woody when I did that bilateral tapping is we're gonna do some uh, nasal cranial technique uh, bilaterally, probably in his middle canals. And then we're gonna have him go for a walk get him back on the table and retest him and we're going to see if he can um, do repetitive testing, if the muscle tests stay strong. Also we need to look at his nutrition because we need to look at his ability to make adenosine triphosphate which is our short term energy molecule which allows our muscles to stay repetitive and keep working like that. But as always I want you to breathe through your mouth. I'm going to have you just turn your head. There you go. So we do the middle canal. Always a little awkward in its sensation. Breathe this for me through your mouth. A little odd. <laughs> Not uncomfortable, just an odd sensation. Doing right side, middle, tubercle. How is that easier? Much easier. Now you've done the right side twice before, I believe. So um, I'm psyched up for it. So it was the brain says, well, wait a minute, this is a different sensation. So there was a momentary... Uh, well, I could hear it kind of go down in the back of your throat. Mm -hmm. and I, could, I could see Woody's... Feet come off. <laughs> feet were coming off the table. I could tell that there was a moment where you couldn't breathe. Yeah, just for a, se yeah. a second. Yeah. Just one very brief moment, but uh, no for damage. The, for those doctors who ever do that, always having your needle with you in the event that you can't get that balloon deflated is important because... Great. Great. It's amazing. It's much stronger. Yeah. Okay, now we're going to do our repetitive testing. Mm. 
Now I have another question. Go. The angle of the head um, adjustment. Would you do this again? Go. Because I have had a spinal fusion, um, the a couple of degrees difference. Such, would that affect? Yeah, if your neck was out, it would. Uh huh. Uh, this is why we're going to go have you walk. Okay. Go. Such a difference. How you feeling? Fine. Maybe you could humor me a little bit and raise. The, yes, we can. And then we can test it. Yes. See if that makes a difference. By the way, 100% with patients it does. But if your neck is out. Uh huh. For you, I think last time we got together, we talked about doing your canals again. So, so if your neck was out mm -hmm. badly, you would have already failed this test. I see. Right off the get-go. Okay. So I'll have patients who fail here in this position, and then we'll drop them into a neutral position. Mm -hmm. And then we'll recheck. Now you're not failing, but if you were, or, or to go from weak to strong, that'd be a neck issue. What do you want you to go run for, go jog around for the... Okay, I can do that. A little bit. We're going to do repetitive testing on Woody, on his quadrants for Morris, and we're going to see if that repetitive testing, if, if Woody can hold that test. Go. How's that, Woody? Fine. Excellent. Let's switch sides. Great. Yeah, that's pretty good. We're gonna. What are we gonna do next? I think the neck is fine. I I, I want to have you stretch my mid thoracic. We're actually gonna do your neck. I think bilaterally today. We'll okay. Let you rest for a moment to just take all that in. That's great, by the way. What a difference. Yes. So once again, when we stimulate the cranial bones through the uh, balloon, uh, it causes the sutures to move and articulate a little better, which causes proprioceptive inputs, which allows the brain to communicate with the muscles more appropriately. And even though I've had a spinal fusion, getting all the vertebrae that will move to move when I want them to move, with your help, of course, um, you know, it gives me not just the energy to do the thing, but the peace of mind. My dreams are better, there's no depression. You know, you know what I'm trying to say? I should just have you stand up front and do, do uh, commercials for me. I would, would love to because I'm a firm believer that, you know, we live in a, a wonderful world with all kinds of science, technology, and physiology. We just need to tap into it. So once again, uh, Woody has a spinal fusion at C3 to T1. Woody's a great example of how patients with spinal fusions can be adjusted with chiropractic when the adjustment is done appropriately. A lot of chiropractors are nervous, and rightly so. Woody, I want you to make a left fist. Yep. You can keep your eyes closed, but I want you to look to the left. You just relax your neck, but I want you to keep your eyes looking to the left, left fist. That's counterintuitive. I know. 
because they want to tighten up. Keep looking to the left.